everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here at Halen RV of Coldwater, Michigan with an exciting new thing from the Cherokee group, and it's what I like to call a Franken camper. And here's what I mean by that. <laughs> um, this is the 6740 pound 29 BRB Gray Wolf. It is like if you took the 29 TE Gray Wolf and mashed it together with the 274 BRB Cherokee, this would be the result. And even the model numbers kind of indicate that. And it brings with it uh, like some of the biggest benefits and a couple of the drawbacks of its uh, of its parents, I guess you could say. And giving you that fair view of things is what you're gonna get from us at Halet RV. Like, it has a wide open, awesome feeling living room. It's one of my favorite living rooms in a one slide bunkhouse camper. It has, uh, unfortunately, limited uh, access to the bunk room in transit. We're gonna go through and we're gonna see all that and a whole lot more as we go here. One big note of housekeeping I wanna put into this though. You hear 6,740 pounds, you hear Grey Wolf, and you're thinking, half ton towable. Maybe, maybe in the case of this one. And here's why I say that, it's not because of the weight, it's because of the length. This thing is as long as, um, Things they reference in a Sir Mix-a-Lot song. It's a long trailer. And what you may not realize if you're newer to this is the longer the trailer, the easier it can push the vehicle around. So heavy duty weight distribution systems and whatnot might be a good idea here, or, or uh, might be a good idea. I don't know what I just said. It is early and the caffeine has not kicked in if you couldn't tell by my face. Um, so the, who knows what we're gonna get on this video today. But what I'm saying is, you never regret having a three quarter ton on this. If you're looking at a half ton or have a half ton, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a bulky or heavy half ton and you're gonna want a good heavy duty anti-sway hitch. Uh, Cause I, I wanna see you at your campsite, not on the side of the road. And this is what I'm talking about right here. It It's like the, the front, I don't know, three quarter, two thirds of the RV is very reminiscent of the 274 BRB Cherokee, but it has that private rear bunk room and, and kind of the length and the feeling to me a little bit of the 29 TE. And they're, they're both really good in their own respects. And this one kind of, it, <laughs> it takes those things as, as Pauly Shore said, uh, on one of his movies, I'm going to take your style and my style and interweave them, you know, <laughs> that's, oh, uh, what was that? Um, that was the one where he was a farmer, right? What was the name of that movie? Oh no, I can't believe I forgot the name of that film. Um, it's an interesting thing because instead of putting like the living room on one side and then the kitchen on the other side, it actually like, it, it, it's a forward living room and a rear kitchen in a bunk model, if that makes any sense. Doing all those Cherokee things they do really well. You see things like that cutting board backsplash that can also act as a side guard when you're cooking over there by the stove. I don't think they intended it that way. And and tell me this is not a better idea. Because in a way the RV already has a backsplash. Those magnet holders, why aren't they on that wall? Wouldn't that be better, right? Like it's fine how it is. I can use it like that. But wouldn't it be better if they were on the wall? I don't know, I think so. Um, over here, you see some easy reach outlets because this is a stick and tin trailer. So wall mounted outlets are an easy thing to do, but there's another set of overhead outlets up there. And I kind of thought about it. I think I would put some USB adapters and I'd turn that into a phone charging station. Although I don't know that you're really going to need to because this thing is swimming in USB plugs for the most part. You got that beautiful black stainless uh, uh, skirted sink right there. <laughs> That's a lot of S's. Holy cow. A uh, nice place for a wastebasket. Two double size uh, drawers, by the way, instead of um, just single little kitchen drawers. Now, over here in the slide, you have this enormously deep pantry. And the slide out is something I, I really want to, to zero in on. It's one of the major differences between a Gray Wolf and a Cherokee. Cherokees have a floor flush slide, this has a step up slide. And this system comes with a lot of benefits. For instance, it is significantly lighter weight as compared to a, uh, a rack and pinion slide system, like you'd find in the Cherokee, a floor flush slide system. It also uh, allows the RV to ride on a, uh, a little smaller I-beam chassis, which makes the whole RV lighter weight and less cost. That's really one of the major differences between Gray Wolf and Cherokee. Now you see in that big True U seven foot sleeper dinette, you've still got the full extension drawers. You also see one of the, the, the things here, I think a lot of people are gonna be like, man, why did they do that? Carpet in that slide out right there. 
Um, I'll give Wildwood credit. In their x Light series, they have a step-up slide as well, and they've gone carpetless in that. I think that's a it, it's a feature that feels right uh, moving forward in the Grey Wolves. It's something I hope they adopt. Now, uh, while we're walking past it, this does have a standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner. I'm not aware of anybody else in this class doing that. It's possible somebody is. And if they're doing it, I, I'm not trying to... I, I just don't know of anybody else doing it. Everyone else I've ever seen is like a 13.5. Now, I like the pockets over here by the Entertainment Center, but this is a long trailer. You're going to hear me talk about that a few times. And everything's greatest asset is its greatest liability. The long length makes for a lot of very awesome space. It also means they had to really shrink things down where they could. And there's just not enough clearance between that slide fascia and that thing right there to add doors. Maybe it could have been a couple inches more shallow. I I, I don't know. But um, it's, it's storage space. There's little lips on it, but there's not really anything keeping the storage in there. So it might be just better decoration space. Um, you've got the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster there. And if the drawer was out of the way, you'd have a better look at the uh, little shoe garage down below. Now, one of the other things I like about this layout, if I back us up, is just the panoramic across from panoramic window cross breeze and viewing action. Because, like, sitting here at the dinette, for instance, I don't, or at the sofa, I don't care which direction you're seating. You have awesome visibility, either off the door side or the, the driver's side of the camper. It just depends. Uh, that, you know, you got the kitchen window there. There's windows in the bunks. There's a full window in the entry door. There's just, there's windows all over the place in this thing. And that down there really shocked me. The, um, uh, the double drawers. Like, when I first saw this, I was like, yeah, like Cherokees, you have a jackknife sofa and there's storage below. And then I went to lift it up and I realized it's fully finished under the sofa. And they put drawers down there, which is a little bit uncommon. Um, another thing that I kind of noticed here, I don't think, again, they intended it to be this way, but these drawers, like the drawers under the dinette, they're actually just kind of wood on wood, but they don't have to be there. So if you're actually looking for uh, a little pet palace, and we are, by the way, going to clean that out. This RV is fresh off the apple cart, Mary. This thing literally just got off the delivery truck. That's when I record everything here at Halet RV. Now, we go through and we clean stuff like that out for you before you take it home. But I thought about that. I'm like, that'd be another good shoe garage. That could be a little cat space. If you got a tiny dog, you could have a little tiny dog bed. Now, over here by the door, a couple bumper caps to the rear bumper when we step outside. This RV is equipped with the juice pack, which adds that little voltage monitor and the battery disconnect switch. I like the fact that it has a disconnect switch. I kind of would like it to be a little bit more out of the way. Uh, it, it feels a little kickable, but I've also walked through the RV two or three different times now. I've never come close to kicking that thing. The new Cherokee Total Control System with the Jedi Mind Trick Motion Activated uh, panel. Now that was no movie magic right there. No George Lucas required. I like that it turns on when it senses motion with this little guy down here so that when you come back to your campsite, it lights up for you. Now, as mentioning, I'd like to see that battery disconnect move. Cherokee, if you're, if you're listening, right here. Put it right here. And you do that on the 274 Cherokee. Um, <laughs> I really should have moved that drawer out of the way before I go tripping over it. But you know what? Let's turn this into a positive. It's plywood. It's not particle board and beaver puke with a sticker wrap <laughs> around it, you know? Um... This RV, by the way, is six and a half foot tall. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. That will mean when we get to the bathroom, I'll need to kind of duck my head into the shower a little bit. I like that we have a slide air, not sliding, pardon me, swinging privacy door back here. And again, four individual bunks. <laughs> my voice, my voice, four individual bunks. <laughs> that sounds like a cartoon character. Um, Hey, Sarge, we have a problem here. <sighs> okay, so my prepubescent voice aside, I want to show you, flipping around the other way in the bunks, I mentioned how there's like household USB outlets all over the place. Every bed in this RV has uh, USB outlets beside it, and that means two sets of USBs up in the master, and these overheads uh, right here, those are good for the upper bunks where you got bigger kids that maybe, you know, have more electronical type things. There is a shade for that um, skylight, by the way, to keep you from cooking yourself like an ant under a magnifying glass. I thought that'd be a little bit better look right there at that shoe garage under the fireplace as well. 
Now, interestingly, this bathroom actually reminds me a little bit more of a fifth wheel. If you look at the layout and especially the size, you see how much room I had uh, sitting around that thing. It is, uh, it is very large. I would maybe add a towel bar to that blank wall right here. But on the way up, one of the nice things that you're going to see is that bigger like XL vent fan standard from this group. I think that uh, given the choice, that is what 100% of everybody would prefer as compared to the four inch like computer blade fan. Uh, but you, you know, any fan's better than no fan. Now, again, I mentioned this being six and a half foot tall, if you're my size uh, or something like that, or a little bit bigger, you're going to have to stand with your head in the bubble uh, in that shower. That's a big medicine cabinet though. And that is a, uh, a, a large sink as well. And this is all sealed edge countertops through the entire RV, back in the kitchen and then in the dining as well. Then little things like this. Last year, people disliked the fact that there was only a motion sensor there activating our lighting. Cherokee said, no sweat, we'll just put in a switch for you. This is a camp queen, by the way. First of all, that's all Cherokee uses. Secondly, this is a long trailer. And to, uh, to try to uh, put a true queen in it from the factory, they would have to expand it uh, quite a bit, about another six inches or so. They did leave you room here. If you go with a true queen, you can fit one. You're going to lose some of your walk around space, obviously, but with this being dual entry, you might be able to work on that or work with that rather. Big viewing window and breeze window over here. And again, you'll see both sides of the bed, like next to those full length hanging closets, have those handy USB and household outlets. Another thing that's kind of uh, cool here, Cherokee Wildwood does this as well, is where you look at your wall panel seams or your roof panel seams, they're using a plastic T-mold because it clicks and locks in place as compared to just like a seam tape, which when the RV gets humid and then hot and cold, which is exactly what happens in RVs when they're used, not used, and the air and then the heater run, etc. You can you could peel some of those uh, pieces of seam tape. This click plank stuff, I mean, occasionally it might pop out of the joint a little bit. You just push it back up with your thumb, and then you're good to go. It's just one less thing you gotta worry about. That's what I like about these guys. Now spinning around here, you see how there is a little TV hookup bracket straight across from the bed. That's the same kind of mount system you find in the living room or outside. So what can actually be kind of cool is, again, in the living room, I think a swing arm mount, if you're going to add a TV, is a good option. But here in the bedroom or outside, you might be able to get away with just kind of floating one TV in and out uh, as you need it. Now that I said in and out, I'm just thinking of an in and out burger because that's what I need. I, I need more calories in my day right now, I swear. Now, they were so close in road mode. This is one of the areas where I don't want to say they missed because it's not bad. Like, you see that you can get in here. You can get to the fridge, the pantry, and you're looking at it going, well, yeah, I can walk right through the kitchen. I, I can get to that bunk room, right? Well, very similar to the 29 Tedward Edward, they... The door opens outward instead of inward, and I don't know if that's a fire code safety thing or whatnot, or if it's just something that they didn't think about, but it does mean that you're not able to get to that bunk room with the slide closed. Now, this is a Schwintech slide. This is not the type of slide system where you should or could be using it uh, partially open or closed. You only want to open it all the way or close it all the way. You don't want to be doing any stopping in between. So it's pretty darn close. We've got a uh, bed, master bed anyway, bath and uh, kitchen access, but not quite the bunk room, so close. Now, as we hop outside here, even on kind of a dreary overcast day, like it feels like it might rain at any moment, but this thing still looks good. Uh, these are what I call Kathleen head turners. Um, <laughs> it's just, this thing has a very uh, good look to it and it's gonna stay that way because you might notice they don't do a lot of graphics. It's mostly just painted metal. Um, it, it is an RV that looks good now and will pretty much stay looking good. Now, you might have noticed uh, we were a little far away, though. It does have a full black tank flush and outside utility shower. And that's kind of one of the interesting things in the Gray Wolf family. I've actually had manufacturers of the other brands that we carry here at Halitz going, help me dissect this. Because on paper, it reads like it's got uh, all the big equipment of my upscale series but it's like lighter weight, like my downscale series. And that's kind of the, the, the secret in the sauce of Grey Wolf. And again, it really has to do with the selection of that, um, uh, that slide system 
and the uh, the lighter weight chassis. You know, it's it's a tricky camper for other manufacturers to kind of combat against. Uh, Wildwood's X Lite being about the most similar thing you'd find out there. That's a little bit better look at the color palette there as we back up. Now, as we back up, look at the door side of this RV. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six windows, plus the window in that full view through uh, entry door right there. I mean, there's it's just feature central all the way over here. And this is what I'm saying. This is, this is an awesome trailer. But if you want a private rear bunk room, a walk around bathroom, private front bedroom, super slide living room, it's gotta be long. That's the only hiccup. And I will say, it's a normal awning for a gray wolf, but because this thing is so long, it looks a little dinky. Um, it's a, like I said, normal on a gray wolf, but it, it wouldn't have offended me if they would have uh, extended that awning to at least back to that rear baggage door right there. It would have felt very appropriate on one of these, but the thing is like, you go, wow, well, why didn't they do that? Well, each factory basically uses specific things on their models. And every now and then they'll build a model that's a little bit of an outliner, uh, outliner, no, outlier for themselves. And little things like that kind of creep up a little bit. It's just kind of one of those things that just goes with the territory. But I like to point that out so you know what you're getting. Now, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you see that uh, gold-colored little uh, propane cooker hooker down there, which gives you a perfect place to do some chilling and grilling, TV hookups, and a great little, I'm not going to call it a camp kitchen, I'm going to call it a convenience center. But if you add yourself some kind of grill station, that is, I think, absolutely a camp kitchen. You've got the ice maker over there next to that little, it's actually an outside utility shower with hot and cold water, which is cool, which means this RV has two of those. Um, <laughs> I camp in a camper that doesn't have one, and I'm always wishing I had at least one, and this trailer sitting here uh, flashing two in my face. It's like when people with gray hair, they're like, oh, yeah, my hair's getting gray. And then I look at my balding hairline. I'm like, yeah, you're rubbing in the in my face that you have hair over here. <laughs> okay, at least you can go get some just for men. <laughs> but you notice how it's like a drawbridge style door right there. I love that because that means that's like the perfect little drink mixing station. And frankly, just having like a little table or a shelf hanging off the side of your trailer, super, super handy. And this is one of the things, again, because they moved the camp kitchen convenience center, whatever you want to call it, not under the bunks. You gain a fourth individual bunk, and you'll see on both sides of the trailer, under the bunks is just full storage. So you may have noticed this RV doesn't have a full front pass-through. I don't know with the two additional outside storage compartments under the bunks that you necessarily need it. Now these, uh, they do have a walkable roof, but my understanding is due to some sort of legal eagle bean counter kind of decision making or something like that. They do not offer a factory ladder, nor are they prepped for ladders. So you will need to use a uh, like a portable side mount ladder for one of these. Now you've got that cargo rack on the back. We like to add the spare tire to these, unless that's finally become standard. It really needs to be. And I've noticed it wouldn't surprise me if it had because Cherokee's getting uh, a little more conscious of some safety related items here. Like you see that additional brake light right there, which is really handy because if you've got a bunch of cargo on this cargo rack, it could easily block those lower tail lights. So that third one there could be handy. And then up top, you have a factory standard Bluetooth backup camera for when you're getting into your campsites. Slide awning over there is, uh, well, nope. The slide is prepped and ready for the slide awning. I told you, I told you I was not, I was not caffeinated. This is not my smoothest work, but we're doing it. Uh, well, we're not doing it live. We're, we're recording it live and then we're, we're, we're posting it <laughs> later. Now, anytime we get a new thing like this, I really, really appreciate uh, feedback from you folks. Like, what what do you like about this one? What would you change? What do you think about what they came up with based on the two previous floor plans that they had at their disposal? And when you're ready, you give our team in here at Haywood RV a call. Hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything between. I leave you a link in the video description. You can always check the current price of one of these. And short of that, we're ready when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy Halo Camp and everyone.